Hey, this is Pastor Russ with Coffee with Russ. I'm trying something new with my blog, and I want to see if you like it. Just let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to, share this with anybody that you think would get a blessing out of this. Well, I'm working on Culture Vultures on Sunday, but obviously I can't get through all of them. So I want to address some other Culture Vultures over the course of the next few days uh, that will help you to be able to beat the buzzards off of your blessings, okay? So here's the one that we want to work with right now is the vulture that tries to steal your healing. Now, if you want some more background on this, you can always go and watch the previous sermon in the YouTube. Link will be below. We'll take care of that for you in the email and on the blog. But I want to be able to share this with you because I think it's important. A lot of people really lose their healing because they lose faith. So let me share this with you. In Isaiah 53, 5, it's crystal clear. It says, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we would be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Jesus took a beating at the crucifixion, and that beating was for our healing. He was there for us. Now, in college, I was getting ready to leave for a week and go on a ministry trip. We were going to Illinois to a Methodist church, and a couple of days before, I became very ill. Virus something, fever, I was miserable. So a couple of days before, again, I went in and I said to the leadership team, I can't go, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go home, I'm going to see a doctor. And they gathered around me, and they laid hands on me, and they prayed for me. And immediately, the fever broke, and my energy returned. I got to go on the trip, and the first night, I preached there in that Methodist church. I gave an altar call, preaching from John 3, 16. Three people came forward. The pastor told me afterwards, he goes, I would have never guessed that would have ever happened with those three. You're the only person who could have ever reached them. So there was a miracle that led to another miracle. And I want you to see that God works in and through our lives, even through our sicknesses and our healings. So. I've prayed many times for many different ailments, and God didn't answer prayer. I've prayed for emotional healing that took a process of time, some of it even years of just walking me through step by step. Prayer isn't a fix-all solution, okay? Prayer is a process of surrounding yourself with everything that God has to offer. Whenever you begin to pray from that point of view, all of a sudden, things begin to change. Now, these vultures would like to tell you one thing. You don't have enough faith, and that's why your prayers haven't been answered. Well, first of all, are you praying? Yes. You have enough faith. Praise God. You're praying. I want you to stay on top of it. You keep praying. Now, you've got more than enough. Jesus talks about this in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 through 10. And there he uses this phrase, shameless persistence. I want you to be as persistent about praying and consistent as possible. Perfection isn't the goal, but you can stay on top of it. Now, some people ask me, why is God making me beg? He isn't making you beg. Beggars don't have hope. Followers of Jesus do. Beggars don't know if what their tomorrow holds for them. Jesus knows what your tomorrow holds for you, and he's already there for you. Beggars, that's their identity. That's who they are. Yours, you're a child of God. So I want you to be encouraged today and keep praying. Let's pray a dangerous prayer together and let's believe God's going to do something for you. Lord, help them to have this opportunity and that they give this need to you. Surrender it to you right now so that you get the credit for it and somebody else's lives will be changed because of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Part two tomorrow. I'll see you then.